Hello! It is a little bit weird because I rarely do sit down videos, but I am gathered here today to have a little bit of a chat. I just got back from my graduation ceremony. Super crazy. I have graduated. It's so crazy because I started doing this channel when I was in my freshman year and now I am done with college. Like, <laughs> that is actually so so insane to me. Ever since I started vlogging, there has been one video that has been super duper highly requested and that is a video about being a neuroscience major. The thing is, I kept planning and planning and planning to record it, but then I think things were just coming up or I didn't feel quite qualified because especially when I was in my underclassmen years, I was barely taking any super heavy neuroscience classes and I didn't have much experience, I guess. But now that I'm graduated, I think I have all that I need to know. <laughs> I'm gonna try to keep the intro short and I want to preface this by saying this is all my own experience. Every requirement is going to be different based on your school. Every person is going to be different based on your interests. What field you want to go into, the opportunities are going to be different. This is basically just what I know from what I've experienced in the past four-ish years. So please take it with a grain of salt. I hope everything that I talk about today covers all of your guys' questions or most of it. I'm gonna try to be as real as I can be. I mean, I literally just got back from my graduation ceremony and I was like, I don't know when would be a better time to film this except for right now. I have my cup of tea, I'm comfortable, and yeah, let's get started. First question is, what is neuroscience? The best way I can put it is that it is an interdisciplinary between psychology and biology. That is how my school defines it. So technically my major is actually an interdisciplinary major where you study the brain and instead of studying the brain in terms of observation and mental processes like you do in psychology, it's about like more the neural function and networks. So it's a very specific looking at the physiology of the brain and its connections in the body and how that translates to our behavior. And so a lot of the classes that I took were focused on the anatomy and physiology of the brain and the neurobiology, how neurons worked, how that gave rise to certain disorders, the functions, and instead of looking at a cause and effect between behavior, it was a cause effect between like the biology of your brain to your behavior. That is the best way that I can put it. Next is, why did I get into neuroscience? So originally I was actually a biology major. I was a biology major all throughout freshman year. Maybe it was like halfway through or towards the end of it. I was convinced by one of my best friends at the time to become a neuroscience major. I originally wanted to be a psychology major, but I wanted something like more biology based. But after going in biology, I just didn't enjoy it. There were so many aspects of biology I just didn't like. It, the information just wasn't clicking with me. And one of the big things was neuroscience. Once I started taking the courses and learning more about it, the information just clicked. I just was able to understand it really well and I really enjoyed learning it so I decided to just become a major. Subsequently, which is a little side note, but I also became a sociology minor because I was also interested in that. I didn't want to do a full major in it but I already was doing so much of the coursework that I decided why not. So yeah, I graduated as a neuroscience major and sociology minor. Were there any moments where I doubted my major or I thought that it was unattainable? I would say honestly no. As a field neuroscience is very difficult. There are a lot of things you have to learn and memorize but to me compared to say computer science, chemistry, math, physics, or all these other STEM fields, those were in my mind unattainable. Like it was so so difficult for me. I'd spend like hours studying each day and I just could not remember the information no matter what. But neuroscience like I said earlier just really clicks with me. I really enjoyed studying it and it was something that I was passionate about. In terms of making it more obtainable and an easier path for myself, I 
very specifically chose courses that I knew I would enjoy learning and I knew were in my comfort zone. For example, one of the requirements for my degree was two math classes. So instead of taking those math classes, I applied to take basics in data science and statistics. Even though that was to avoid taking calculus, I am so, so glad that I did that because I feel like both of those things helped me tremendously in my thesis process within the past year and actually doing work that applied to my field. Because of that, I feel like what I have obtained in terms of my classwork is a lot more curated for myself and fits into what I want to learn, what I want to do, and what I want to know. Even though at times it has been challenging, I have not ever thought that it was unobtainable for me, but that I could just make it work and I will find a way to make it possible. <laughs> The next question is, what are the classes that I should take and what should I expect when I become a neuroscience major? This has been a bit of a difficult question to answer. Every university and every college has its own requirements between me and other peers that are also in a neuroscience major at my institution. We are all taking different classes based on what we're interested in. For example, they'll give us a selection of classes based on behavioral neuroscience or behavioral psychology and we have to take at least two of those classes but we can choose which ones we want to take and so it's stuff like that where every school is very different and you'll honestly just have to go to the school that you're interested in and look at the requirements a lot of schools actually have that information listed on their course requirements major requirements and you can go there and you can find it out in terms of what to expect as a neuroscience major you can expect to be in a lot of lab chemistry lab biology lab psychology lab physics lab you'll have to take so many so many labs I I don't even know how many I've taken in the past five years and I am drained of them. So be prepared for four or five hour long class sessions and you can expect to do a lot of journal readings. It makes it sound like both of these are like really awful things. It depends on the person. I personally really enjoy doing journal readings. Some people hate it. I didn't enjoy doing labs as much but I have friends who absolutely loved the labs. It's different for every person. Just be prepared to be consuming a lot of different information and applying those skills. On a similar note, a lot of you guys have asked how much work do you expect? The past three years that I have been in college, aside from this year, so from freshman, sophomore, and junior year, I have been on the brink of an overload. My institution works on a basis of 4.5 units. 4.5 is the typical cap. If you want to go over that cap, you actually have to apply to do an overload. So I was doing like right at that cap every semester and that was about four core classes with a gym or an extra lab or something. Freshman year, a lot of people decide to only take three classes each semester just to get into the groove of going to college. Try it out and if it's too much, then next semester take a class off and if it's not enough, then take more. I just ran out of storage so I had to clear everything off. As I was saying, I hope you guys also keep in mind that every class is going to be different in terms of coursework. Some are super light, some are super heavy. Keep that in mind as you register for your courses. Next is what is my motivation and what are tips on productivity? When I was a biology major, I didn't enjoy it. After I switched to being a neuroscience major, I really enjoyed what I was doing, the work I was doing, what I was learning, and that was my biggest motivation was because I genuinely thought it was so interesting i wanted to learn more and i put in that effort to learn more aside from like that internal drive and then the drive from like you know the fact that it's my major i have to do it to graduate and get a degree is family i have a very great support system with both my family and friends everyone that i surround myself with really cares about their study and being able to do study day together help each other out reach out to one another is so great and tips for productivity this is a question that i get asked so many times. My experience with productivity, procrastination, I procrastinate a lot. I am just like everyone else and I procrastinate so so much and it might not seem like that because most of the time when I procrastinate I'm lying there on my phone. Most of my recording is on my phone so it takes away from the ability for me to actually record content. I am just like everyone else I procrastinate too. First off I will do whatever I really really want to do procrastinate in that moment but I'll put 
a time limit on it if it's like social media and if it's like journaling i'll be like okay one page if it's cleaning it's like okay i'll just clean this table and then i'm like okay you have to go back to work i once read in a self-help book i don't remember which it's the idea of just do this one thing for five minutes okay that's all you have to do that is often just the amount of time that you need to really get started on doing something and really getting into it so for example, if I don't want to go to the gym, I'm like, okay, Mia, just walk there and then try to go on the treadmill. And my main excuse for myself most of the time is that I'm too tired. I'm like, if you're actually too tired, then you can leave. But then most of the time when I get on that treadmill, then I'm like, okay, well, I've already walked here. I'll just do it. And that applies for homework too. Okay, five minutes. And then those five minutes are up and I'm like, okay, well, I'm already halfway through this paragraph. I don't want to lose my train of thought. I'll just finish typing up this paragraph. That leads me to the next one. I'm like, okay, I'll just type up this one. And then if I'm done and I don't want to do, say, sociology work anymore, then I'll be like, okay, go do your chemistry homework. That is how I try to keep my productivity up in the simplest terms and get my work done. This next section isn't going to necessarily be a question, but more so a topic, and it's about internships. Internships are a big part of academics now and finding a job and especially within the STEM field, it is huge. I have had done my fair share of internships, my fair share of research internships, as well as just other types of internships. I know how hard it can be to apply. It can be very daunting. You can get imposter syndrome and it can feel very overwhelming with the sheer number of applications you have to fill out. The most success that I've had is personally reaching out to people. There are some people where I find their work is really interesting, so I will reach out to them or they're working in a field I want to go more into, they're working at an institution that I just want to gain some experience in, see what it's like, and I'll reach out to them. Oftentimes, these people are very friendly and they're wanting to help you as someone who's interested in the field. I have tried to go through the application route and I've had an internship through one, but the most success that I've had are through reaching out through people personally. And that doesn't even have to be an internship. It could be about gaining experience in general. My advice for internships is go hard or go home, you know, be out there and don't be afraid to reach out to people. Next was in terms of what equipment or supplies do I use to study? And so I use a MacBook. It is the MacBook Pro 14 inch 2021 with a M1 Pro chip. That is the one that I use. But honestly, I really think you can use any laptop. As long as you're able to type, look things up, you will be fine. And in terms of like a tablet, I use the iPad Air. I have found it to be so, so useful. And I'm super glad that I got it because I save so much paper and the convenience of it is super nice of just being able to download a worksheet and then write over top and submit it. I've been able to submit forms super easily and the biggest thing is being able to annotate journals very, very easily. I download the journal article and I was able to highlight it and take notes on the side, write mini summaries all within my iPad and I use Colonote as my main note taking app and new school drive for everything else. The next question, and again, this is kind of more of a topic, but it's about campus jobs. I've had a lot of questions about how many jobs I'm working, what kind of jobs I have on campus, and how am I helping to afford college? Because college, at least in the States, is not very accessible. I have not talked about it a little bit much because this does get into more like finances and a little bit more personal, but very honestly, I am completely on a full ride to college so very very thankfully i am able to graduate without student loans that is because of a multitude of things but one of the important things is that i work campus jobs for example my housing advi advisor position where i work on campus as a residential advisor. So I've been able to have that taken care of as part of my compensation as working as a residential advisor and most schools will do the same. And a lot of other campus jobs I take are part-time ones. One job, for example, is I submit all of my online notes to a portal and I get compensated for that. 
Another one is remote work. That adds a lot of flexibility. And another one is grading. And typically it's like an hour, two hours each week. Those have just been some of the ways that I've been working through on-campus jobs. If you go through online campus job portals, then you'll often be able to find very similar job listings available. And I highly recommend applying to those because I've been working mostly jobs that are very flexible and remote. I've been able to manage that a lot more so I'm not as stressed with my coursework. I would say don't overwork yourself. That is very important. A lot of people have asked me, what do you do with a neuroscience degree? And do you feel like being in neuroscience has pigeonholed you? And I wouldn't say so. Just like biology, there's so many fields that you can go into. And if I wanted to, I could go to med school. I could go to law school. I could go biotech. Before, I also thought that your major defines your whole life, it defines what career you get, and especially in undergrad, I feel that that isn't necessarily true. Your options are a lot more open than you might be led to believe, and I've talked with so many people. I've talked to people who have gone into med and they're doctors, and they're like, yeah, I graduated with an English major, and I mean, that is going to be a a longer journey than someone graduating with all of the prerequisites for it already, ultimately you're going to end up where you need to be. Neuroscience is such a huge field. It combines just so many sciences that if you're interested at all in any of the other sciences, neuroscience would be perfect for you too. The thing that you might find is a lot of careers and say like med schools, they don't necessarily need you to be a certain major. They just need you to have certain skills or certain classes, certain experiences, but it's never like you have to be this major so I don't think that has pigeonholed me and the experiences I've gained from being a neuroscience major have been amazing I truly believe that it does open doors for you and as long as you keep your mindset open and opportunities open that you have so many different options for what you can do postgraduate the last question that I have today is tips for you guys to get into college and my high school stats all of that breaking it down very upfrontly, if that's the word. My SAT scores were 1440. My ACT scores were 34. My high school GPA, which was weighted, was a 4.2. Unweighted, it was a 3.98. Those are all of my high school stats. But if your scores are not like that, then I really don't think that that is going to say that you cannot go to college. For example, if you show, show great improvement over the course of high school or if you have a lot of extracurriculars to write a phenomenal college essay there's so many factors that go into a college acceptance beyond exam scores that if you don't have these specific numbers they are not going to restrict you from becoming a neuroscience major or going to college and my tips are honestly just try your best because there is nothing beyond that that you that you can do. I don't think I can offer anything new that you guys haven't heard except for be involved with your school, try your best, and just show that you're a very driven, motivated, and hardworking student. I'm sure you'll end up in the right place. That is all for today's video. I hope I did not ramble too much or go in circles. I hope it was useful for you at in at least one way and that you're able to learn something about it. I have graduated now in my degree in neuroscience and sociology minor, and I have enjoyed the past four years of my academics, and I hope you guys do too in whatever journey that you guys may be starting on or you have started on or you are even finishing up and you're planning to maybe start something new. I hope you guys enjoyed my first ever q and I love you guys so much and until the next time, bye! Woke up at 11 o'clock, I ain't got no job, what the hell should I do today? This feel like some I don't give a fuck, oh my gosh, shut the fuck up, I ain't hearing what you